y'all. Ash from Rifle Supply here. Today, I just wanted to talk to y'all about some of the forms that you need for starting your background check here in California. So for starters, you do need a California ID, uh, such as your driver's license, for example. Um, if you have the Federal Limits Apply ID, meaning you do not have a real ID, then you will also need to provide either your uh, birth certificate or a valid passport, valid meaning unexpired. Um, on top of that, you do need proof of residency from the state. There are a few examples of what this could look like. Uh, for example, um, a utility bill, like your gas, water, electric. Um, you could use a signed, dated, and notarized copy of your lease agreement if you're a renter. Uh, it could be a 30-day or one-year fishing, uh, fishing license. Um, or you could also use your valid car registration. So also valid meaning non-expired. So uh, for your proof of residency, if you're in a pinch, either go get a fishing license or I guess go buy a car. On top of that, uh, you could use for proof of residency your CCW, so your concealed carry permit, your COE, your certificate of eligibility, um, a guard card, a hunting license that's issued by the Department of Fish and Wildlife, anything like that. Uh, one of the last things you'll need for your background check is your firearm safety certificate. Uh, your FSC card is what it's commonly called. Um, we offer that test in-house. It's pretty simple. It's a multiple choice, common sense test. Uh, just kind of testing your, or your gun safety knowledge in particular. Uh, you have to be at least 18 to get your FSC card. Um, some exemptions for an FSC card, uh, so it could take the place of your FSC, uh, could also be your CCW, um, if you're California law enforcement, uh, if you're active military, things like that. So, uh, if you are under the age of 21, so if you're between 18 and 20, um, there are some firearms you can purchase. You are largely limited. For example, you can't buy any handguns. Sorry, that's California's rule. Um, but you can buy uh, certain long guns, uh, particularly uh, bolt action or rimfire rifles, um, puff action shotguns. So you got some options there to work with. So for handguns, you can only purchase a handgun new from a dealer, uh, one gun in every 30 day period. Um, there are some exemptions to this, however, uh, for example, if you're California law enforcement, that rule doesn't apply. Uh, same can be said for a return to owner, uh, but also for private party transfers. So if you didn't know this, if you're doing a private party transfer, you can do multiple handguns at once or multiple handguns within a range of time. As long as it's a private party transfer, you don't have to worry about the rule, uh, the one in 30 rule. Uh, but also uh, that applies to consignment guns. So come check out Rifle Supply. We have a huge consignment wall, both long guns and handguns alike. Um, and if, if we have something that you're looking for, don't have to worry about the 30 day rule. It's considered a private party transaction. So your Joe's waiting period. Sorry, there is no way to get around that. Usually uh, it is a 10 day minimum. During this 10 days, the DOJ is looking over that little dross application that we submitted the day that you came in to get everything started with all your paperwork. Minimum of 10 days where they're going, you where they're deciding whether you can or can't have that firearm. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Uh, it could take up to 30 days and there's different reasons this could be the case. Um, perhaps they just have a high influx of applications. So they're just, it's taking them a little bit longer to get to yours. So don't freak out if you're getting delayed, it happens to a lot of people. So there are some exemptions, certain people that don't have to worry about the 10 day wait. For example, if you're law enforcement and have a chief's letter, uh, you're exempt from the 10 day. Also, if you have a special weapons permit uh, issued by the DOJ, that can exempt you from the 10 day waiting period, as well as if you are an O3, FFL holder, so you're a Curio and Relic Federal Firearms License holder, um, that 10 day wait uh, is negated if you're purchasing a Curio and Relic firearm. So other things to consider when you're doing your background check or about to start it. Um, if you are a non-California resident, for example, your military stationed in California, but this isn't usually where you reside, um, you will need to bring in also on top of everything else that I mentioned, uh, your military ID, 
your state issued ID for the one that you usually reside in, and then your military orders. So that we can confirm that you are in fact temporarily living here in California and are eligible to purchase a firearm. So that's my little spiel about what you need to start your background check. If you have any more questions, please give Rifle Supply a call, shoot us emails. We have a great customer support. Uh, we'll answer all of your questions, whether you're a new gun owner, or you've never owned a gun in your life, or you've been through so many guns that, you know, you can't even count them. You have too many safes. Nah, never too many safes, but you know, your, gar your garage is pretty full. Uh, give us a call, we're happy to help, and we hope to see you soon.